Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Amanda, and I'm coming to you live from the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California, where we are so excited that you allow, are allowing us today to be a part of your education and as we start this brand new school year. And I hope you're ready to learn today about some really interesting things because we've got some pretty interesting animals behind me. And there's something that we're going to talk about related to them having to do with life cycles. So life cycles is the topic that we're going to be discussing and I invite you to join us as we do this today by texting us any comments you have, any questions you have. I might throw some questions out at you and if you have an answer for me, I would love to hear from you. So you can text us at the number that you see on your screen at 562-286-1838. Three, eight, uh, to give us your feedback during the program if you're watching this live. Now, if you're watching this at a later time, you're still welcome to include any questions you might have as you're watching this. Um, you can email us at the email that you see at the bottom of the screen, live at lbaop.org, and we will be happy to respond to you at that time. So no matter when you're watching this, we would love to hear from you. So let's talk about what a life cycle is. I'm sure you've heard that word before. And if you think about life cycle, think about any other word you've heard with a cycle in it, like a bicycle or a tricycle. What are those? A bicycle is something and has two of something. What does it have? Those wheels, yeah. And a tricycle has tri, three wheels. So what does a wheel if you think about the shape of it, it's a circle, right? So why do we use cycle and circle as life cycle when we're talking about that? Where does a circle start and where does it end? It can be hard to figure that out. Now, if you're drawing it from nothing, it's easy to start and look at where your pencil is or your pen and draw a circle. You can say it started there and then it ends when you get back to the beginning again. So it's a cycle that keeps on rolling and rolling. And where does it end? Where does it stop? It's all connected together. So let's look at some life cycles. What is a life cycle? Well, it all starts kind of the same way with birth. If you're starting with, from a blank sheet, right? So everything has to be born somehow. And then things have to grow. And then they have to reproduce so that they can make more of them. And then death is also a part of the life cycle. But before that happens, if reproduction happens, it keeps the whole cycle going over and over again. So let's talk about some different life cycles. There are two different kinds, really. There's a simple life cycle, and then there are the complex life cycles. So can you think of any animals and the life cycles that they might have? In fact, I want you to think right now, what are a few different animals you might think of? And what is their life cycle like? Is it simple? Or is it complex? Now, what do we mean by that? Well, simple means if you start off one way when you're younger, you pretty much have a simple straight path of what you're going to look like as an adult. There might be some minor changes, but you can even think about a person. When a baby is born, we're kind of miniature versions of the adults. It's not like we have wings when we're born, um, or it's not like we are like little worms that are crawling around the ground. We have two arms, two legs, a head, you know, the sizes of those things are going to change because when life starts off, it starts off pretty small and then we grow into the adult size. But when I was born, I was not the same height that I am now. I was much, much smaller. But, and obviously I look a little bit different than I did in my baby pictures, but a person, a mammal, has a very simple life cycle. Starts off small and then we just grow into an adult. But we're still considered you know, the same name, people, uh, baby, adult. Now, baby and adult are two different stages of our life cycle, but there are, other, there are other animals that actually have different names at different stages. Now, this animal that's behind me right here, you can probably recognize the animal it is. It's a stingray. Now, this particular one is a cow nose ray because it's got these cool little bumps right at the front of its head. And then it's got this long tail. You can only see some of the tail right here, but right about here, there's a little spine that sticks out that would be their stinger. So the stingray, let's think about this particular animal. When it's born, hmm, how is it born? 
Well, we know people, mammals, are born live. But what about bees? Do they hatch out of eggs or are they born live? Well, rays happen to be born live, just like people are. So when they're born, cow nose rays are actually born one little cow nose ray at a time, usually just one. And you know what they're called when they're babies? They're called pups. So this is a stingray, a cow nose ray. And when they're babies, they're born as little miniature versions, but they're just called pups because they're much, much smaller. Now, also, I just got word from Carrie, who is sitting at our computer, and she is telling us that we have three classes from Lassen Elementary watching. We have Mrs. Ruiz, Mrs. Shiver, and Mrs. Zia's class. So, hello to all of you. Thank you all for joining us today. And we're so happy you decided to join us. And I hope to hear a little bit more from you uh, during the class about the animals and the life cycles that you're thinking about. Uh, so, getting back to the stingray, I wonder what they look like when they're younger. So an adult stingray, you know, kind of flat, basic body shape. And then this is what they look like when they're younger. Huh, what do you notice? Is there anything that stands out to you? Now, when you look at them, do they have kind of the same body shape? What's different from this picture compared to the one we were looking at earlier of the adult? I can tell by looking at that that you know, it's pretty similar to a stingray. I would guess that that was a baby stingray. But what things are different? Well, one thing I notice are the colors. Did you notice how different the colors are? When we looked at that first stingray, did it have the same colors that you see in this picture? I didn't really notice any red like I'm seeing here. And also there's white. I didn't notice as much of that on the other stingray picture. Remember how it was kind of brown on top? Maybe a little bit of light on the underside, but this one seems to be light and it's got red on it too. That looks really different. But what other color do you notice in here that seems a little unusual? Hmm, do you see that color, yellow? Well, what on earth is this? This is kind of strange, isn't it? What are those yellow things? I don't remember seeing a yellow thing on the front of our stingrays. So Junie says, why is the mouth under their body? Oh, that's a really good question, Junie, because when we were looking at that stingray earlier, you'll notice here's a great picture of the underside where its mouth is. And did you notice how flat the ray was? It's very, very flat. And that flat mouth helps them for getting food that is on the bottom underneath them when they're lying on the bottom of the ocean floor. So their mouth is on the underside so that as they're sitting on the bottom, all they have to do is swim over food that could be hiding in the ocean. But they actually don't even need to see it because did you notice? Oops, I'm pointing the wrong spot. Right there. Their eyes are up on top of their head, but kind of on the sides. Their mouth is on the underside. So it's really hard for them to see where their food is but they have something special that helps them find their food called ampullae of Lorenzini. And these are little pores on the underside of their body that can detect the electromagnetic fields that are coming, the electric fields coming from the animals that are hidden in the sand. And so they don't even have to see them or smell them or hear them to know that their food is there. All they have to do is swim over the top of it. And with that mouth on the underside, they can just suck it right on up. It's pretty cool. So that's why they have their mouth on the underside because they spend a lot of time on the bottom of the ocean and that's where their food goes. So it kind of makes sense that their, their mouth would be closer to where they're going to find their food. So good question. And then DVA homeschoolers are also watching and said hi. So hello, it's nice to see you. I have heard wonderful things about you all the time watching. I haven't had a chance to teach a class, I don't think with you yet, but thank you for joining us today. So life cycles. The ray has a simple life cycle, but if we go back to that one picture, did you notice those yellow things that were sticking out? What is that? Well, this is what is giving the nourishment to these animals when they're still inside their mom. And so this is like their little yolk sac. It's basically, even though they're born live, they grow inside their mom with this little like a sack lunch. So if you've ever had an egg, you cracked an egg open, you see the, the clear part, and then there's a yellow thing in the middle, the yolk, well, the yolk is all the nutrition that that animal, that baby animal needs as it's growing inside the egg. And so even though a ray doesn't grow inside an egg with a shell, they do still have that sack lunch that's attached to them when they're inside 
their mom. And so when they're born, they're born live and they don't get born until after they've used up and eaten up all that yolk sac. So mom says, you have to eat your breakfast first, make sure it's completely eaten up and then they can be born and they can go out and play in the ocean. So that's what those little things are there. But these are little baby stingrays. And when they come out, they come out looking like little miniature versions of the adults, but their color is a little bit different uh, when they're uh, first born. So those are rays. They have a pretty simple life cycle. Have you thought of any other animals with simple life cycles? Or maybe you've even thought of some with complex life cycles. Well, how would you know? Well, first of all, right here, we said we are mammals. Here is another one of my favorite mammals here at the aquarium. Do you know what these are? These are seals. So these are harbor seals. And this is a picture of mama harbor seal, Shelby, with her little baby harbor seal, Kaya. And look at them. Aren't they cute? Oh, look, nuzzling. Look at all those whiskers. We call them vibrissae right here. Oh, look, that's really important for them. They use, they're very, very sensitive. Great with the sense of touch. And it tells them a lot about their environment. And it also probably helps them show a lot of love to each other too, knowing where baby is and where mama is. But what do you notice about them? Do they look pretty similar or do they look really different? Well, what are some things that we can see that are the same? We can see those whiskers, those vibrissae. We can see their mouth, their, their nose, their eyes, all pretty similar. Oh, you can even see the little ear hole right up here. But now look at the coloring of the animals. Do you notice anything different there? Look at mama seal. Now look at baby seal. Oh, nice picture there. Oh, they both have fur all over their bodies too. Oh, and they have flippers. So this is pretty much a miniature version of the adult, of the mama seal. So this is a very simple life cycle. Very simple as they're born. They look very similar to what they'll look like as adults, but much smaller. You notice the big difference in size, but also the coloring can be different. Can you think of any other animal babies that look different when they're younger compared to what they look like as adults? I know one animal I can think of um, is a deer. And a lot of deer, when they're younger, they have these little spots on their bodies and they have a dark body um, that helps them with those spots to blend in and camouflage with their surroundings. Now, why would that be important for an animal? Why would they want to, oh, have spots and want to blend in? Well, when they're younger, they don't have quite the speed and quite the ability yet to notice where all the dangers are and to get away from predators. So they're better off if they can sit still in one spot and hide and camouflage. And so having different coloring when they're younger, when it's really, really important to be able to hide, well, that helps them to survive. And then when they're older and they're stronger and then they can get away faster from predators, um, they don't necessarily need to have those spots. So I think about deers and the and fawns and those little spots that they have on their body. But there's also other animals here at the aquarium. Another animal with a simple life cycle that hatches from an egg. Can you think of any other animals that hatch from eggs? Maybe a hard egg? Yeah, a bird. So a bird hatches from an egg, but a lot of times those birds look very... Here is a black neck stilt. Ooh, I disappeared and reappeared. Isn't that cool camouflage? Now this one right here has really long legs and then it's got a black body and white on the underside. So this, this is a black neck stilt and they are really cool shorebirds that live sometimes on the land, a little bit on the land, but they also venture into the water with those long legs to help them find their food. Well, what do you think their babies look like when they're born? I wonder if they have long legs too. I wonder if they're pink. I wonder, do you think they have that long beak too to help them get their food from the water? Well, we had some black neck stilt babies born here at the aquarium, and this is what they look like when they're born. So they're still called black neck stilts, but they don't have quite the black neck that their parents do. In fact, notice the coloring around them in their habitat. Look at how similar it is in color. So this kind of modeled with a little bit of that brown helps them to blend in better. Also notice their legs they don't stand out quite as much. Are they still really long? Yes, they are. They have very long legs, a lot longer than like little chicks that you might think of. Uh, maybe if you were ever looking at some that were born on a farm or if you've ever raised chickens, uh, their legs are a lot smaller, but they don't live 
by the water where they're stepping around in the water all the time. So they still have long legs, but they don't stand out as much as the adults do. And that probably helps them to camouflage and blend in. So here's a picture of them with mama. And look at the differences in those legs. Now, obviously they do have some long beaks, not quite as long as moms yet, uh, because they're not having to do as much um, of that. They're not going into the, as deep of water, getting out all the food. But what's really interesting is when these birds, if they're, if they're concerned that there could be danger around or they just want to huddle close together and be safe to mom, well, they will gather around and underneath mom in such a way that sometimes you don't even know they're there. In fact, look at this strange bird that has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten legs. Have you ever seen a bird with ten legs? Well, only two of those belong to this bird. The other ones belong to her little chicks. But you can see how they're kind of hiding underneath here. And oh, there's one kind of sticking its head out from under her feathers. So she's got them all underneath her feathers for protection. And so this is all part of a simple life cycle. So there's still baby birds that look very similar to the adults, even though their coloration changes. And that happens with a lot of animals, even fish. So fish change their colors as they age many times as well. But we don't really have different names for them. Well, I shouldn't say that completely. I'm going to ask you a question. Is there anyone out there who knows what we call baby fish? Now, you might know baby birds are called chicks a lot of times. Um, that even baby turtles have a name. They're called hatchlings. Um, do you know what a baby fish is called? I'm going to let you think about that for a little bit before uh, I tell you what it is. But let's move on to a more complex life cycle. So a complex life cycle means that during that circle stage of their life, as they grow and before they become an adult, they go through stages that might have completely different names. You might look at one thing and call it, you know, one word at the beginning stage of its life, but then it looks totally different. And we might even give it a completely different word later in life. And so this animal right here is a perfect example of an animal with a complex life cycle. So these are jellies. Now sea jellies, they're very unusual animals. You probably know that sea jellies are very simple. They don't have any brain. They don't have any heart, which is pretty amazing. But think about how are jellies born? Do you think they lay eggs that sit on a shell at the bottom of the ocean? No, they don't. In fact, it would probably break if they did that, if it had an egg like a chicken shell. Um, that wouldn't work very well. But they do have eggs, but they're very, very tiny. And what happens is the mama jellies will hold on to those eggs in these frilly things up here. So if you look at their body, sea jellies have what's called a bell. It's that round part. So right here, perfect example. That circle part is called the bell. And then around the outside of them, you can see they have these long tentacles. Those are the parts that sting. But then in the middle, they have these oral arms. Now these oral arms means mouth arms. Some of them you might notice being frillier and prettier than others because many times they have little, they're basically holding onto their little eggs. And so the dads will hold onto their sperm, the moms will hold onto their eggs. And then when they're ready, they release them out into the ocean for them to be, to find each other. And then they become what's known as a planula. That's a weird word, huh? It's basically the egg, it's floating around in the ocean, the planula, and let's see if we can find a good example. Oh, we just got it just off our screen right up here. But this is basically a little baby egg that got released from the mom and the dad, and they meet in the ocean. And then when this little planula, this little egg, fertilized egg, finds a place to settle, like maybe on a rock, then it starts to grow and look a lot different than what the adults look like. This is what we call a medusa. Medusa, maybe you've heard of medusa in Greek mythology with the snakes all over her head. Well, anyhow, this is a medusa stage. It's where they kind of hang like this. So they have the bell on the top and the tentacles hanging down on the sides. Here's a good picture. Here's that little baby planula. Now this is so tiny, it'd be really hard to see it. It's like between my fingernails, small. But then once they settle, this planula turns into something that looks a little bit different. 
A good example, it's called a polyp. A good example of a polyp is a sea anemone. So there, here's kind of an upside down picture. These are some um, little polyps that have settled onto something like, say, a rock. And then what they do is they start to grow up. So they settle down here and then they grow up like a sea anemone. And they look like they have all these tentacles up here on the top, right? And then they're attached right down here. So this is what we call a polyp. So the polyp is like a sea anemone where it grows up from a stalk and then reaches out. And they are really, really tiny. Remember how I said the eggs were like between my fingernails small? That's how small these little polyps are. Now take a look at these. Do they look similar to that drawing that we were just looking at? Well, remember they have that long stalk that kind of comes up and these would be the tentacles, right? Coming off. So all these stringy things that you see in here would be the top part of the polyp of the baby jelly. So a baby jelly in the polyp stage looks very, very different from the adult in the Medusa stage. Well, over time, what starts to happen is these will grow taller and taller. See how these look a little bit longer and skinnier than some of these other ones do? Well, what happens is as they get longer and skinnier, then they start to break up into these little segments. And it's almost like a stack of little Dixie cups all sitting in top, inside of each other. So if you look at this, so it changes from the polyp into this thing called a strobola. And then something crazy happens. One by one, all these like little Dixie cups start popping off and they become more baby jellies. So from one stalk, it starts to break up and then we have all these little parts that break off and start floating around. And they all become individual free floaters in the ocean. And these have a special name too. Notice it looks a little bit more like the sea jelly that we think of, but it's still a little bit different. We call these ephyra. So ephyra are the baby jellies past the polyp stage. So they're not just growing up like this and stuck onto a rock. Now they can actually float all over the ocean. And so this is called an ephyra. And ephyra are also very small, like between my fingernails, but just a little bit bigger than those polyps were. And as they grow, eventually these little parts that are all kind of different pieces, because it kind of looks like my hand, they're all like broken up into these little pieces. Well, those will start to kind of blend together and fill in Here's a good picture of an ephyra. So see how they have all of these, it almost looks like a star, right? A star in the ocean. And it's not a baby sea star though, don't confuse the two because baby sea stars also look very, very different. But this is a baby sea jelly. And all of these parts will start to grow together and fill in in these spaces here and become all rounded and together and turn into an adult jelly, a medusa. And then again, be able to reproduce and have more baby sea jellies. But did you have any idea that sea jellies look so different in their different stages of life? Very different. Can you think of any other examples of animals that have those different um, stages and different names? Now, DVA Homeschool also said they know what baby fish are called. They are called fry. You're absolutely right. Baby fish are called fry. Isn't that funny? You know, I was not, it wasn't until I was in college that I realized that that's what baby fish were called. So you're well ahead of the game here because I thought when people said fish fry, they're talking about frying up fish and it was like a type of food. I didn't realize that baby fish were also called fry. So something new you learned. So yes, they have different stages. We have different names for different animals in those different stages of their life cycle, but we have, even though we have different names when we're younger, like an infant or baby versus an adult, we have a simple life cycle. Very different. Oh, here's a great moving video. So you can see the movement of these polyps, the baby stage of the jellies. Now, do you notice this one right here? This one, this polyp is a strobola that is starting the process that we call strobulation, where they come off and become individual jellies. So see how that one is just kind of pulsing like that? That one is so ready to become free floating. It's like, I am tired of being with everyone here. Maybe it feels like that, like everyone who's been in quarantine. I'm so tired of being around all my family all the time. I want to get out and have freedom and float around. And so this one is getting ready to break off from the whole rest of the stock and float around. And he would be a little ephyra. 
So same thing with this one, this little one right here. Um, she might be floating around as an Ephira very soon too. But it's kind of fun to look at those stages. Again, very, very small. So if you're ever able to come visit the aquarium, uh, we hope that you'll be able to see our sea jellies that we actually grow here and you can see them at all stages of their life cycle. So those are the sea jellies. So have you thought of any other animals with interesting life cycles? Well, I know a common one that people talk about are frogs. Now frogs have different stages. What do you call a baby frog? I know a bunch of you are probably saying it out loud right now, so we'll just put it right on up there. Yeah, you might think of them as being tadpoles, but look at how different these look from their different stages. So we've got eggs. No, we know what eggs are, right? And then as they grow, those are the little embryos, and then they become these tadpoles with legs. But what's really different about the frog and the tadpole, the adult frog and the tadpole, think about how they breathe. Well, we know that frogs are amphibians, and amphibians all breathe with lungs as adults, so they just need air to be able to breathe, right? But the tadpole doesn't start off with lungs. Where is it swimming? If you look at its body, you'll notice the body shape is very different from the adult body shape. And where do you think they spend their time? Are they hanging out in the desert? Do you think they lay their eggs on the sand? and they just wait for them to hatch? Nope, they actually look for water. They look for freshwater ponds, pools, puddles even. Yes, even a puddle. And they could actually hatch out, so these embryos hatch from the water, and if they're in the water, they wanna be, make sure they're able to breathe, so they have gills, and they use gills. They're actually on the outside of their body. And so they have gills to help them breathe water, and they have these little teeny tiny back legs there. But then as they grow, that tadpole gets bigger, and it becomes basically a frog with a long tail. And what happens is those gills that were on the outside of their body, well, they start to become inside and then they get lungs and they don't use gills anymore. And those gills disappear. And so this is a stage of the young tadpole or um, you can see that big long tail. So it still looks a lot like a fish, looks very similar to a fish, but now it's got these front legs here. So this tadpole looks very different from this frog. But notice this frog still has a little bit of a tail there. They call that a froglet. Uh, so a little younger version of the adult is a froglet because it looks like a well-developed frog. It's got those front legs, the back legs, but then still a little bit of the tail. But a lot different than the tadpole, which is spending still most of its time in the water. Now this one can come out and breathe and eat. Also think about what they're eating. If this one is living in the water, well, it's going to be feeding on things in the water, insects that might be living in the water. And if you ever go to an area where there might be frogs and fresh water and you look at the things that might be in the water, guess what? There's probably going to be some little insects in there. And these frogs are helping, or these little tadpoles are helping eat those. But when they get bigger and they can come out of the water, they still can eat insects, but sometimes they're eating the insects that are out in the air and not just insects that are in the water like these are eating. So at different stages of their life, they have different adaptations, different characteristics as part of their body that help them to survive in those environments where they're growing up because they grow up in different places and live differently um, when they're babies versus adults. And so their needs change, their bodies change, um, helping them to camouflage and live in those habitats um, at those different stages. So here we have one of our frogs at the aquarium and you'll notice the coloring matching pretty well some of the environment around it. Although, in this background, it's really standing out. So there must be a reason. Why do you think this frog might be really colorful? Maybe it's a warning symbol, like, hey, leave me alone. I could be dangerous to you. We know that poison dart frogs have bright colors to warn people, don't eat me, or warn other animals not to eat them because it wouldn't make them feel very good. But this one, I think, is a different frog, but I don't remember if it is poisonous or not but it's kind of fun to watch these animals at their different stages. Well, it is already time to um, get going and say goodbye for today. So I hope you enjoyed learning with us, talking about animal life cycles, learning about the different stages. And we hope that one day you'll be able to come and visit us at the Aquarium of the Pacific. But until then, we would love for you to join us again for another Aquarium Online Academy. Uh, we'll, we're done for today, but we'll be having more classes tomorrow. So join us then, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.